Hey folks, this is Vagrant and welcome back to Immortality. We got started in the last video and trying to piece things together. I'm just going to head back to the main page. I want to show you something. If we go into About, we actually get a little bit of information that I read uh, when I finished the last video. Marissa Marcel is more than just an enigma. Born in France, Marissa moved to London in the late 60s where she worked as a photographer's model. Her appearance in a sub commercial was spotted by a casting director and led to her being cast from thousands of hopefuls by Arthur Fisher as Matilda in 1968's Ambrosio. The movie was never released. Do we know why Ambrosio never came out? No, I don't think so. Marcel followed this up with the 1970 movie Minsky, a collaboration with her DP, director of photography, from Ambrosio John Jurek. The movie was never finished. And we know that's because Carl Greenwood died. Marcel was not heard from for over 20 years until in 1989 she reappeared into the film Two of Everything. So I've been calling that film Zoe. But maybe that's a scene name or that's her. It's not her. I don't think that's her character's name, but it might well be. But the film's called Two of Everything. Reuniting with John Jurek, now a successful and acclaimed director. With Jurek's death, this movie was also shuttered. Marissa Marcel was never heard from again, so we didn't know that, but Jurek is going to die during the production of this third film. In 1968, many thought Marcel would become a huge star, but these days she's largely forgotten. A few dedicated enthusiasts have attempted to find her lost movies and floated their own theories of what happened to Marissa Marcel to no avail. Then in 2020, a breakthrough. A large cache of film was discovered containing footage from all three of Marcel's movies. After carefully collating and scanning the footage, we have created this piece of computer software in an attempt to preserve bloody Nora, the work and share it so that Marissa may live again in the hearts of audiences. So we are just trying to figure out what happened to her. I don't know if that means there's a, there's a <laughs> natural ending point or anything, but now we've got the posters on the right for Ambrosio by Fisher. Minsk by Jurek and two of everything. <sighs> Why Jurek? Why do we always yawn in this game? Anyways, there you go. So, in the last video, we set a bunch of favourites because there was tons of clips we had yet to watch. So, we're gonna go. Do we not see this one? Okay, we saw that one. Oh, right, it's. I'm being confused. Okay, so let's just go through the uh, favourited ones that we haven't seen quite yet and figure out what on earth happened to Marissa Marcel. Just gonna do some slight changes actually. <laughs> uh, sound, music, movie, up. I think that's about right there. Seems a bit quiet. Action. I've succeeded. Beyond my wildest hopes, I shall live, Ambrosio. I shall live for you. Oh, happy day that I shared myself with you. We are raised above the others of our sex. My deed has exalted us. What have you done? Please do not keep me ignorant. You should have no secrets from me. Do not reproach me. It brings me no pleasure that I must conceal from you the source of my happiness. But the fault is not mine, but yours. <laughs> You are still too much the monk. As yet, I cannot entrust you with this secret. Be patient. Remember, you swore not to inquire what happened here. Though I forgive you for breaking your vows to heaven, I insist you keep your vows to me. When we coupled the last two nights, I was weak with poison. Now I am restored. There are pleasures this body can give to you which you cannot imagine. Think of my flesh as an island on which Ambrosio parched and hungry has been washed ashore. Cut, it was great. Are you ready for a satanic fuck? <laughs> That's what it says in the script, Arthur. All right, damn, Marissa, calm down. <laughs> favor that one so I didn't see anything we can jump off from there I'm aware that there's like loads of clips where I could jump off into like a billion other things but since we've got so much to watch anyway I'm not too worried about that um I don't know how much I meant to glean from the films themselves I am curious why Ambrosio never got revealed oh never got released though and maybe there will be something in the film itself that shows us that if we click LB this is just my Ambrosio I don't have much on Ambrosio most of the stuff I've got at the moment is on Minsky We've got quite a bit on um, 
Oh yeah, it doesn't say Zoe. It says two O E. I, I said it was a weird Z. I remember saying it's a weird Z. Two of everything. Ah, dumb. Um. Yeah, we're lacking Ambrosio stuff, but we'll 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 figure it out eventually. All done. A couple hundred pages left. Bear with me. Oh. Okay, so she only appears. Oh. There's more Ambrosia. I'm just gonna favorite that. Go back over here. All that reading, you'll go blind. I personally believe you learn more psychology in a week working tables than you do reading a textbook. Deviant psychology, though? This is New York. How about a wager? Another game. Next customer walks in. We we'll both write down which table they're going to pick. Deal. Where you get your shirts. They're nice. Kensington Taylor's on 12th Street. I picked some up for my brother. They're expensive. That's okay. My brother's more of a tracksuit and vest kind of guy. Oh, hey, Tony. I got a table for you right over here. Yep, right here. <laughs> I'll get you some coffee, okay? No hard feelings. All's fair and love and walk. Jesus. You're the deviant. Ugh. Anyhow, I don't date cops. Ring, ring. Hey, Goodman. Phone call for you. The precinct. Cut. That's good. Ready to move on to the standing close-ups? Miss Perkins, you can flirt with Carl now. Okay. <laughs> Hey, you need some change? Buy your brother a shirt. He's a good looking guy, I get it. It's got that all American kind of vibe, you know what I mean? So that was Minsky. I'm really curious, right, like what was the accident? What happened to Carl? I mean, he got injured, he didn't die on set. He died later on, I'm assuming, I don't know, nice. Just gonna grab some people while we're here. She's gonna... Okay, it's actually going backwards, which is interesting. Can I grab anything else? Yeah. There's always there's like a billion things to grab. Oh wait, I'm not allowed that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting idea. I don't know how much I love it. It's definitely unique. I I do think I preferred what we had to do in the past, which was like, um, you have to put in keywords, you have to search things. You remember that, oh, what was it called? That Lansdowne detective game we played where you had to keep putting all the keywords in for what you wanted to search for. Right, I've got to stop though, because <laughs> I'll just keep jumping onto things. Let's just watch. Go back. Oh, right, I've got to remember to do this because so many times this has happened. Because what it doesn't put you right to the start of the clip. It puts you to where they think that image most appears. So we've got to remember to go back to the start. Scene 19B, take three. I'm going to make you live forever. This is not Don't something. talk. Take your shirt off. It's getting in the way of the lines and colors. Carl, calm down. 
Now the rest of it. You know, Minsky used to insist I walk around the studio naked at all times, so he could absorb my form. I was only allowed to sunbathe nude because tan lines ruined everything. I have to draw the limit here for the video. <laughs> YouTube, please leave me alone. <laughs> I will actually, for the very, for the second time in my life, have to use the nudity tag in a video. You know the other time I used it? Metro Exodus. to do something more sculptural. Is this okay for uh. YouTube? <laughs> She might take some issue with what just happened. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> next clip. Um, but yeah, the the only other time I've ever had to use the new DC tag in a video was during Metro Exodus. I can't remember what point it was, but there was a stripper basically at some point. And that was not human nudity, so. I guess episode one we got past it, although there was language. There's a lot of effing and bleeping and such. Not very appropriate at all. Tut, tut, I don't care. I don't think anyone should care, really. We normalise violence so much, but sex and nudity and everything like that it just becomes some bizarre thing, even though, realistically, it should be a much better thing, right? I understand not everyone partakes or wants to partake, but the point is, violence is a, a force for negativity, generally speaking, gross. Sex is usually a force for positivity, so why is one okay and one not? I know, it's very confusing to me, but there we go. Concerned by her imminent death. But she knows it's She's not pretending. Real. Perhaps in case Ambrosio sees it's part of her act. Chin up. Cut. I like the devilish one, but. Alright, again, I've got to remember. Eleven Charlie. Take three. Eleven Charlie. Uh also, this is weird, but every now and again, it keeps, um, I think you can probably hear it on the video, but I can feel it in my hands, my controller's vibrating, and there's this, like, ominous kind of rumble, which I don't know if it's meant to be the machinations of the camera, but I get the feeling it's more, this is an important moment, basically. This is something that contributed to what happened, if you know what I mean. And... Action. I might start noting them down. Oh no. That was the night, my child. He was troubled, but by midnight he had fallen asleep. I have prayed so much my brain aches. I will have you replaced that you may rest. You 
will make yourself ill, which would compound her sadness. His sleep has calmed. Oh, blessed virgin, the infection has vanished. Vanished? That's my lancet. It is clear. The venom has gone. Father Ambrosio. <laughs> St. Francis, be blessed. What do you say? I feel I slipped over the arm. It was a miracle. A miracle. I feel weak. Otherwise healthy. You should rest. You have recovered from the poison. But I suggest two more days to restore your strength. Rosario, you should sleep. I will have Sebastian take your place. No need, Father. This miracle has restored my energies. I will remain by Ambrosio's side until he walks again. I cannot argue with the effectiveness of your prayer. If you need help, call. If only he knew. I've seen this bit. I'm just gonna. There's a way to. There we go. I was gonna poke at that man's face. <sighs> Hello, man. Oh, he's in the Minsky Swall, which makes sense. I mean, actors, directors, yada yada, often use, you know, the same actors several times. Okay, seen all these. Bait him alive. <laughs> what do you think? It works. I think Marissa looks sexy in red. Can I just point out, like, this isn't important, but I hate her hair with, like, a deep burning passion. This hairstyle obviously was a thing back then, and it is just. Oh, it just breaks. It's just. It's like a ah da da da. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just 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 letting you into my life a little bit. <laughs> I need to pull these off pretty quick in the scene. I can loosen them up for that scene or have a second pair. The top works great though. What about a princess? Ready? <laughs> there there will be makeup on the day. It's fucking sexy. <gasps> Don't we make a great couple? Smile. See, just then, just then, the ominous rumble. Don't we make a great couple? And clearly he was not, you know, necessarily... He, he felt a little bit weird about the situation, whether he felt weird because he wants to be a real couple or because the idea is repulsive, I don't know, but either way. All right, great couple. What I really want. I wonder if I could do that for the future episodes. I wonder if I could get like an online note taking program that looks good. And I can kind of like, kind of like we, we did for Tunic and kind of like just drag it into the screen. You guys can see what I'm doing. I don't know. Hello. You ever crash test before, Carl? <laughs> no, sir. It's an apple pie eating football playing California boy. An American classic. I want you to go get a, take a test drive. The outfits. Oh, yes. How so? <laughs> well, you know, go grab some drinks on uh, Gino's down. Take a walk and walk. Come on. <laughs> She's gonna eat him alive. You're not wrong, random woman. I think she's. I don't know, she's like makeup and clothing and stuff like that, right? That's the impression I get. Okay. Selominski. Action. I 
It is. I will. I will say this much. It's very interesting how they've done this. Just, just building up my uh, my repertoire <laughs> while we're on the very start of the scene. Oh, we might not be actually. I've got to remember that. Really quite hard to keep in mind. I'm just trying to build together. I just want to get all the clips, basically. I guess. Take me somewhere, Apple. Oh, I mean it makes sense, but I do. I do think that's a cool idea. I think it'll get better as we go along as well, as it gets a little bit more complex to find the missing clips, I guess. Oh, that was a start. Cool. Action. Took a good bite out of that. Cut. Tails? Scene 3D, take two. Interesting. You know, so the director's often talking in the background and stuff like that. Like, most audio you hear in films is recorded in post or sound effects and stuff like that. Like, very few audio is captured live. I can't remember if this is a thing. I kind of want to check now. Bear with me. There's a thing about how most, like, dialogue you hear in a film isn't spoken live, basically. Um, one sec. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously you've got boom mics hanging around. You are recording the dialogue, but oftentimes there'll be background noise, oftentimes other things will be going on. So, not all dialogue, of course, and it'll depend a lot on the director. Some directors, I imagine Fincher, in particular, who's known for being very fastidious in terms of his takes, like he'll make people do hundreds of takes, ever so slightly different just to get it perfect. Uh, Finch is the guy who did um, Seven and Mindhunter and uh, Fight Club and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> He's very fastidious about the whole thing. Um, but a lot of dialogue you hear, especially if it's in the street or if it's anywhere with noise, and yet you can still hear the actors clearly. Um, which is becoming less of a thing now as mumblecore kind of increases in popularity in filmmaking where people prefer more sort of naturalistic style you know people talking over each other people being drowned out yada yada um, not to say what mumblecore is but mumblecore is increasing at the same sort of rate um, but that dialogue is often voiced over later on so they can get a nicer clear version basically fun fact it can be so terrible to see Three apples, take three. This is very early. This is the earliest scene we've got, I think. How does she look? Beautiful. Perfect. All of the blessings of the feminine with none of the faults. Her purity is power. Her radiance. Her faultless complexion shows her as a weapon of God. Who's there? Only Rosario. Enter, my son. I brought some flowers from the garden that I thought you would like. Your attentions charm me. You were impressive in church today, Father. I cannot take credit for the Lord when he speaks through me. But you enjoyed my discourse. Oh, yeah. I've never heard such eloquence. Well, save once. Who? When and who was this? Yourself, Father. When you preached after the passing of our late superior. Yes, I remember. You were present. You were not yet a novice then. I was there. But perhaps I wish that God had not led me there that day. I would have avoided some suffering. Suffering? At your age, Rosario. My heart yearns to tell, but I fear to lose you. How could it be so terrible to sever my love for you? There's the bell for Vespers. We must go. Seek me out after confession. I cannot leave your mind so vexed. Cut. I don't love him as an actor, if I'm totally honest with you. Not my favourite. Oh, 
Oh, calm down, Ambrosio. <laughs> is that the next clip? Uh, I think it is. All right then. This uh, <laughs> well, there's your good warning that it's about to not be quite so PG. I mean, it it looks like it might well be PG-13. It really depends on how much that arms move from the current position, wherever it remains <laughs> PG-13. PG-13, can you have can you have nudity top level nudity in a PG-13? Maybe. I think you might get away with it with push. I think it's probably more likely to be a 15, though. And... Action! Dangerous <laughs> 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 you done? Ambrosia? You have plunged my life into the abyss. My honor. My life must pay for the pleasure of a few moments. Wretched Matilda, I was a fool to trust you. You have destroyed my quiet forever. You reproach me. Me who has sacrificed the world a lifetime of pleasures. What have you lost which I have not? The pleasure was shared. Your vow of celibacy is unnatural. Your love of crime. God would not have made it taste so sweet. No regrets, Ambrosio. Enjoy what we have before I'm gone. I will leave this world vibrating with pleasure. My vows are already broken. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. <laughs> My first thought was that is the um <laughs> that is the absolute pinnacle of post nut clarity. <laughs> Just what have you done, you wretched woman? <laughs> like a minute earlier, yep, yeah, time of my life. Now it's you wretched woman, you've doomed me for eternity. <laughs> Oh god, I forgot to go to the star again. Clear the set. Again, it got a little vibration there. It was when she said before I am gone. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. I do think it is syncing up with things that have a slightly ominous tone to them, so I, I don't think it's a coincidence or a, a machination of the camera. Sarah, you please? Sarah pleases, clearly. <laughs> Sarah's all up in there. Oh, damn. Right at the start of Ambrosio. Really piecing Ambrosio together today. This is all reminding me that I need to start hitting the gym a little harder. <laughs> it must be said. 17. It's interesting seeing the correlation, well, the contrast, I suppose, between the, um... Oh, where are we? Yeah. Bravo. Thank between the, um... You know, the older films and the newer films. Because, obviously, they're immensely different in terms of Two. quality. And... Okay, well, we don't need to see that again. Lovely sweaty people. <laughs> right, moving on. And... Oh, hello. So, uh, see, that's like, that's more exciting to me for some reason. Finding that very first Ambrosia clip, or at least the earliest one so far. This is the fifteenth of January, very much April, fifteenth of April, nineteen sixty-eight. And it took five months. So they were auditioning here. It took five months until filming. Ambrosio! It 
has done cut down. Cat, give me a real bird. <laughs> the earth move for you too. Whoa. Marissa was coming on. There have been several circumstances. Wait, didn't we have this one already? I don't remember. There have been several circumstances where it feels like she is directly, where people are directly addressing the camera. Okay, there's been two. There's this. Which, I mean, she could just be talking to the camera, talking to the director kind of thing. But that super weird clip we had with the two people sitting on the couch, the guy very, very directly looked at the camera. What happened to you, Marissa? I'm actually getting really invested. This is kind of just like with Tunic again, where after the first video, I wasn't really, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't buy in entirely. But now I'm like, what the hell happened, Marissa? I want to find out. I'm just going to go back a little earlier. 23 Apple, take one. I don't think it really missed anything here, though. Right? And... No, okay, we're okay. Okay, well, let's go back. Let's check out this first clip. A farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? I'm just gonna grab your face, love, if you don't mind. See, I swear we had this clip already. I think we did. No, we definitely did. So that other clip I just favorited, we also had with the, with the harp. Because what I'm finding is not necessarily always new clips, but where's the harp? Is this it? This is it. It's not just new clips, it's um, <clears throat> linking images together, right? Clapperboard, Ambrosio, Cross Ambrosio. It's, uh, it actually links it. Penelope, book. So these are all the images we found. Okay, that's interesting. Right, let's check this clip out. I know thou wilt say I, and I would take thy word. But if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. Right. Okay, so this is the chair from the um, the home screen. Hello, dear. What's your name? Penelope, sir. Five foot ten and eighteen years old. Five foot ten, damn. She reminds me a lot of Amanda Bynes. Is it? That I'm thinking of yeah. Not the hair, but the face. And have you prepared a piece for us today? Well, let's hear it. Th this is from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Oh, an up-and-coming writer. <laughs> Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush but paint my cheek. For that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form. Fain, fain deny what I had spoke. But farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I... And I would take thy word. But if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. A lover's perjury is then say, Jove laughs. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or else if thou thinkest, I'm too quickly won. That is lovely, thank you. There is more. My dear, so far we've seen over 30 Juliets. And whilst you are very charming, you're only the fourth best today. Oof. Thank you. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Don't say, you can't say pretty though. <laughs> there are rules about this kind of thing. Cha. Yeah. Um, as I remember this clip, I, I used to watch, I still do, well I don't recently, but I used to watch a lot of Project Runway. I don't know why I just really got into Project Runway. I have no inkling about fashion. I don't care about fashion. But I had this period where I was into Project Runway, and I decided to go back and watch the early seasons. And this is only vaguely related to what we just saw, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. And in the early seasons, things were really weird. Um, There's a lot more downtime, a lot more social stuff, a lot more off behind the scenes -y kind of stuff. And there was one night where the models and the designers all went out on the town to a club. I think this was season one. And they were meeting up with like producers and you know people who owned agencies and stuff like that. So obviously the models were flirting and you know trying to get their name out there. You gotta bear in mind a lot of these models are quite young. And there's one woman 
I think she was 15 at the time. I mean, she, she was like six foot two or something. She definitely looked way beyond her years. But she was 15, 16. She said this to the guy. And... I can't remember what he said, but it was caught on camera. And he's looking at this 15-year-old. And he said something incredibly sexual. Let's just put it that way. It's, it's something about wanting to... Wait, I've just broken my controller. <laughs> what did I just do? What the hell was that? Oh, I just wore that off. Interesting. There's these little levers on the back of my Xbox controller. I think to control sensitivity. And I just pulled it off. Um, with my incredibly strong <laughs> pinky finger. <laughs> um, well, index finger, actually. I don't know, it just reminded me of that kind of... I don't know. A kind of inappropriate... Reducing... I mean, I suppose I did it with the hair girl, but the way that women are reduced to... Sexuality and appearance more than anything else. Less so now, but still a prevalent problem, you know? A feminist, what can I say? I'm gonna grab some faces. Faces is just like the most obvious thing to grab, right? So I'm just gonna grab them every moment. When they pop up. We have built quite a repertoire, however, <laughs> so it's probably time to stop pretty soon with this. There's oh my god, hello. There's, there's quite a lot of clips for us to watch, <laughs> so I'm going to grab one more, then we're going to just stop, I think. It'd be nice if it was clear whether it's a new clip or whether it's an old clip, but I guess as long as we're watching them in their entirety, we'll figure that out anyway. <laughs> Is this Ambrosio? This is very weird for Ambrosio, which has only been in the church or the graveyard so far. This has been my first time working here in Italy. Oh, it's like the wrap-up party. Well, not necessarily the wrap-up party. Well, it's clearly not the wrap-up party, but it's... Maybe the party, you know, everyone's been recruited, everyone's been hired. And now it's before they start recording. And my first time working with the great Arthur Fisher. I just want to say thank you for trusting me to be your Ambrosia. What a movie. I always say, you can't make an A picture without an A team, and this has been an A team. Look, we took an 18th century novel and made a 20th century picture out of it. That's pretty magical. M.G. Lewis, I don't know if you're up there or down there. <laughs> Wherever you are, I hope you like what we made. VMO. <laughs> Arthur, you want to say something? Come on. I've never seen him before. Oh, it is this guy. It's the Hitchcock looking guy. But I should look for. Interesting. Oh, hello. I, I really like finding these early clips. He looks a little like Hitchcock. He looks a little like, um... If you look at the poster for The Darkest Hour, he looks a little like Winston Churchill. Thank you, Thank you Rob. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as you know, I work behind the camera, and I usually have someone to write all my dialogue, so I'll keep this short. You all have been wonderful. And I'm sure you're probably sick of hearing me talking, so I'll shut up. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, Robert. And Marissa, get up here. <laughs> and all of you, you've been a marvelous crew. <laughs> this has been my first movie. <laughs> what a first movie. I feel like I just went through four years of film school and acting school and just life in a few months. What a team. Arthur, you were harsh but fair. For everything you put me through, I learned a lot. And your karma is having to spend the next six months staring at footage of me while I sleep it off. I hope you see something you like in there. Everyone, a big round of applause to our star, our gorgeous, la bellissima Marissa Marcel. <laughs> 
I love you all, and I'm here. Okay, I've got this dude. Gotta grab. Oh, I already have that one. You can always. You, can, you just gotta grab the dudes while you can. Only to say that I pay for the bar for the next hour. It is rare that I'm this generous. So please have a drink and toast to our new friends, to movies, to the movies. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, what's interesting is that this clearly is the rap party, so I guess what we're seeing... Because that's... Oh, wait, no. These I thought these were in date order, but they're not. That's the 22nd of April. Well, that's the that's the 19th of October. That's the 5th of... Sep... J August. <laughs> September. Yeah, that's the 5th of August. That's the 5th of August. This is both the 5th of August. I left on the same thing, but that's the 19th of October. Why are they not... Have I done something? Yes, that's my fault. I, I clicked the button and put them in a different order. Okay, so I'd rather have them in... in production order. So yeah, that one we just saw is the rap party at the end of filming for Ambrosio. So I mean, they filmed it, they finished it, they were all really happy with it. Why would the film not be released? We still don't know that, but after that it's Minsky. You know, it's funny the difference between these two already in terms of how modern they feel. You know, it's only a year or two later. But that's the thing about films. You can't just make what's current. You have to kind of predict where film is going in the next few years as well. Because obviously, films can take years to make. So, you know, if you, if you, it's the same with indie games. You hear, if you talk to indie game devs, a lot of them, they'll say, well, it's not about trying to catch on to current trends. It's about trying to predict what's going to be popular in two years or so because games take a long time to make. And if you try to build something for the current generation, maybe by the time your game comes out, it's not relevant anymore. Anywho, so this is our fourth Ambrosio clip. I think she's been hired by now. We saw some test screenings there. Grab your face. It's very intense, isn't it? <laughs> Where are we? Scene of 14, rehearsal. Yeah. Okay. We start looking at Ambrosio, and we come around as he sips his stew. Do I have my cowl up or down? Yeah, up. Be careful not to say a stew on myself. Just be trying not to look at Matilda. As we come around here, cap your line. Eat up, Father Ambrosio. You must regain your strength. Good. Ambrosio stares. She doesn't look up. Going close on her face, her lips, she's dying. We do not know, just the lips to us. She finishes, she stands, and leaves. Nods to another monk as she steps outside, and back to Ambrosio. As he stands, we cut. About this cow, it, it's all here. I find she's... I, it's funny, I read a review of this game on Kotaku, which I should stop doing because I hate Kotaku these days. It's gone so far downhill. But um, they slated her. I think she's pretty good. He, I don't buy. I think he overacts. Maybe, I mean, that. I mean, don't get me wrong, overacting could be a choice. They're not necessarily trying to be the best actors because they are actors playing actors, if you know what I mean. So... It could definitely be a de definite choice, but I think she's quite effective. I think she's quite, I think she's quite good. I feel there's a lot bubbling away under the surface, you know. More rehearsal. Scene forty-eight. Scene forty-eight. Riesa. Which is Italian. Hey Arthur, put some of the action on the day, okay? Where are you headed? I would speak further with Antonia. I feel a responsibility to soften her suffering. She's ill. She dreams of visions of her own death. Your concern is touching. No, I'm no prostitute. 
Besides, I'm a poor substitution for Antonia's unbroken purity. Your spell was wasted. I now have no claim to Antonia. There is a way. Oh. Her grief and this dream she has spoken of adds form to a plan I have considered a while. In three days, she will be dead to the world. But she will live for you. For magic. This herbal mixture, a secret of the prioress, produces in its drinker the appearance of death. Administer a few drops to Antonia. She will be thrown into strong convulsions after which her blood will cease to flow. She will appear as if a corpse. Having no family, you may appoint yourself the superintendent of her funeral. Have her buried in the vaults of St. Clair. Their isolation and remoteness is favorable to you. Give her the drink this evening. In 48 hours after, life will return to her bosom. She will wake in your power, your slave. Necessity will bend her to your affections. Matilda, you are a true friend. I live to serve you. Less subservient. I live to serve you. Like this, I live to serve you. I live to serve you. Oh. I got a little rumble there. I think these rumbles are genuinely really important. I'm annoyed with myself that I haven't been recording them throughout the entire game. I wonder if I want to like scrubble through the other clips super quickly. Probably not. That was, I'm no, so we've got the, the couple thing with Carl. We've got the before I'm gone line and we've got that I'm no prostitute line, so. Someone new, someone. Interesting stuff. First day of filming. How do you feel? I'm excited and nervous. The hand on the neck I find disconcerting. Cut. So impossible for me to know if I've seen that clip before. I thought there was a way to check. I don't think there is. It'd be nice if there was like some way to mark seen or not seen. Maybe it would have been smarter to mark ones I have seen as opposed to ones I haven't seen. That would have been that would have been the right thing to do, actually. In retrospect, should have thought about that from the very start, though. This, I want to justify Mr. Fisher's casting me. This is such an incredible opportunity, and Matilda is such a challenging character. And I knew to cast the role that I should look for someone new, someone young and exciting. And uh, when I saw Marissa, I had the idea to cast for Rosario and to then sculpt her into Matilda. Now, there are many actresses who can play the temptress, but. Um, this character is so special because she takes the form of an innocent. When I saw Miss Marcel, she had a spark. I see great things for her future. Oh, we're rumbling. Any talk of her future tends to be ominous because <laughs> she disappears. But that's a long time, boy. You can still hear it rumbling in the background because I paused it. And how does it feel to be sculpted by Fisher? It's a great honor. An odd honor. An odd air. The ship doesn't want to leave. She's in Ireland. She's leaving the future. And how does it feel? The great war. She's leaving things for her. What? Future. She'll leave her things for her future. Yeah, but... And how does it feel to be sculpted by Fisher? It's a great honor. Okay. What? An odd air. The ship out this block seems to leave. Is it not? She'll leave her things for her future. Future. And how does it feel to be this And how does it feel to be sculpted by Fisher? I swear she said something. I can't hear this. Oh, this is super weird. Okay, so not only do I have to remember... Man, I completely didn't realise that was a thing and that I should have been scrolling back through the clip to uncover it. It's that, it was the woman from the couch as well. There's something underhanded and something a little supernatural-esque going on here. It's 
30 Bravo, take one. Nice and sweaty, please. Not a problem. Fake sweat. <sighs> Movie making such a sham, honestly. Not PG-13, let's just get that out of the way. I mean, I don't think I should have to warn you about that, but uh, yeah. And action. More desperate. Oh. Don't hold back. Oh. Not in the camera. Can't look at the camera, John. It's hot. Oh. It's modern. <laughs> I'm off with your modern. Marissa, look at the bed. Okay, Robert, you finish in three, two, one. He says it's modern, it turns it basically into softcore porn if she looks at the camera. Um, we have to scroll back because it vibrated a lot. Shut up, no jokes. I don't really want to see his face in slow motion. The vinegar strokes, as they say. Game, don't make me out to be a weirdo. I know there's a thing here. Oh, see? It was, it was, what is going on? That, 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 what was, so it's basically like a shadow film, right? This is like a ghost of a film beneath this one, and he was just having sex there with her. Now she, I think during the other scene as well, there's, there's this bold woman and she seems to be basically taking Marissa's place in several scenes. And Carl was replaced as well. He wasn't replaced, but Carl was replaced by the guy with the slicked back, slicked back blonde hair. What on earth? I, I am so curious as to what is going on here. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, no, not Mavodi. That's a rap party. Two in the bush. Five Bravo, take three. What is going on? <laughs> and action. Let me just see if there's anything I can grab. Yeah. Police are. Right, this is definitely new. Oh, that's early as well. Early sex hang. All right. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm aware that if I don't grab everything, I don't need to grab everything. I'm just, I'm trying to focus on grabbing early ones. Oh, hello, that's our latest, 1999. Got a lot of new clips down here, I think. Got a billion bloody clips everywhere. <laughs> I'll do. This bird was my sister's favorite. You had a sister? This is the source of your sadness. Yes. Matilda. She died of sorrow. Of what sorrow? She loved a man with a passion born of virtue no one loved as purely as Matilda. Who was the object of her love? One sadly already married to another. His bride, heavenly and pure. Neither he nor Matilda did anything to inflame this passion, but the more virtuous he showed himself to be, the more she was drawn to his light. Unhappy girl. One day she confessed her love to him, wishing not to be dishonest. Despite her protestations of virtue, he drove her from him. He refused to see her again. It broke her heart. I 
him killed? Too severe a fate for so innocent a crime. This man's choices were ill considered. You think so? Doubtless. I pity your sister. Oh, father. Then pity me. I have no sister, father. I am Matilda. I am a woman. You are my beloved. I concealed my sex and joined the Abbey to be closer to your holiness. This cannot be. Please, do not be shocked by my dishonesty. I acted out of love, a pure love given me by God. I do not wish to be a woman to you. Damn my sex. I wish only to be your friend. It cannot be. You have brought great risk to yourself and to my brothers. Holy is that rose your... Did I misjudge your temperament? I thought you would understand. Let me be Rosario. Treat me as a man, but let me stay. No, it cannot be. If I were discovered, I would be destroyed. I cannot let it stand. For my own sake. For, for the order. I pray you show compassion. Unhappy Matilda. You have my compassion. I am convinced that your motives are pure. But you are blind to the imprudence of your actions. My duty to you begs me to treat you harshly. You must be gone from here by tomorrow. Tomorrow? Surely you cannot mean it. You have heard my decision. The laws of the order are exact and our vows compel us to obey. I pity you, but I can do no more. You must leave. I have no choice then. I will not leave this abbey alive. Have you lost your senses? Kill yourself and lose your claim to salvation. You forfeit your soul. I care not. Paradise here with you. Oh, perdition without! Tell me you will conceal my story and retain me as your companion. Else this dagger drinks my blood. Hold. Stay there, Chandra's. Stay for my destruction. And we got it. <laughs> that enough tete for you, Gino? <laughs> well, I'm used to them coming in pairs. Well, a uh, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Oh, Marisa, <laughs> you're a marvelous. You're going to get me excommunicated. <laughs> you ready for your close up, Gino? <laughs> Okie dokie. But actually, I'm just gonna just get off that, <laughs> just, just, just in case, I'll do what I can to, <laughs> to save myself from YouTube. Are these in order now? 19, 21, 8. It's interesting because I kind of, I, I forget this a lot myself sometimes. Obviously in the film, that scene comes before this scene, right? Because <laughs> he can't really complain about her love for him when he's bent her over the bed, so... But in actual date, this one is uh, two days late in recording. But films are so often shot completely out of order. I always thought that would be quite a hard thing to deal with as an actor because obviously you build, you've got a story to tell, you've got a character to build, and stuff like that, right? And if the film is jumping around and your character's motivations are changing and where your character development is changing and stuff like that, then you'd think it'd be quite difficult to keep those consistent and actually grow with your character and kind of embody them more completely. I always thought if I was a director, and you can't do it, if you're going to do like a big, huge motion picture kind of thing, feasibly there's just no way to film in an order, in chronological order. It just isn't realistic these days, or ever, really, seemingly. But I always thought if I was a director, and it was an indie film or whatever, I would go to some extra levels of pain in order to make sure it was shot entirely chronologically just to ensure the actors felt more in tune with their characters i guess anyways that's just me being mildly pretentious um <laughs> we're gonna end it there we learned a lot of interesting information lots of new clips lots of sex scenes and uh yeah still really interested to see i mean the big thing of course is figuring out this we want rewind thing and who is this this man and woman that we keep seeing who knows until then thank you for joining me cheers much as always 